So if we want to save this plot, first let's save it as an object called P. Okay. Now we can use the ggsave function and save that object into a file name. Let's call it gridplot.png. The extension here tells ggsave what sort of file to save it as, as a JPEG, as a PNG, or what. So we're going to set the plot equals P. And let's give it a new size. We can set width. Now width defaults to um, inches. And it's usually 8 inches wide by 5 inches tall. Let's make this one, um, since we've got three on top of each other, let's make it 9 inches tall and, whoops, height, and width, keep that at 5 inches. We can also set DPI, the dots per inch, to 300, which is usually the default that you get from journals. So this will create a PNG that's 9 inches wide and 5 inches tall when it prints out at 300 dots per inch. Click that, and then inside of our files folder, we now have a file called gridplot.png. If you click on it, that's what it looks like. And what if you want to change the size of an image as it displays in your R Markdown document? So instead of saving it, we can just output plot grid. If we run this chunk, we can see that it's kind of squished. We want this to be a different size. Now you can control this in the um, top of the chunk here, where we have the open curly brackets R. We can give each chunk a name, and it's good practice to give especially your um, figure chunks a name. So cowplot-demo, put a comma, and then we have a bunch of chunk options. We can make this chunk not show up, so we can put echo equals false. That means that the code won't show when you render the markdown document or you knit it, um, but the output of the code will show. So it will show you the graph. We can also set figure width here. We'll set this to the default of 5 inches and figure height, and we'll set that to 9 inches. Every figure really should have a caption, so if you set figure cap equals um, demo multiple plots with cow plot. Okay, so if we run this chunk now, that will create our figure at the right size. It doesn't always render right in the um, browser screen, but when you knit your whole document, so let's knit everything here. You'll see it, the previous code chunks we made with multiple plots on the same panel, multiple panels using Facet. We have our output from cowplot, and I'll show you how to get rid of that in a minute, although we don't see the code here. And then our figure at the right size with its caption. Okay, so how do we get rid of all of that extra stuff? We can add another option to our code chunk. So set message equals false, and that should suppress any messages that come out. We see there are no messages there. If you want to suppress messages for your entire R Markdown document, you can do this at the very top. Remember, whenever you set up a new R Markdown document, you get this default code chunk called setup, and it has include equals false. This means that the code will run, but you won't see any output from the code chunk or any of the code. Now, it has this knitter function called ops chunk, and it sets echo equals true. So this gives you default values for the our chunk options, and we want them always to echo unless you tell a chunk specifically not to. But we can set this so message equals false throughout. We never get messages in this document now when we render.
We can also set different default figure width and height if we want. So figure width, let's make that on average always 5 and figure height always 5. So we want square images by default and we can change that for a specific image in the chunk header. So if we knit that with these options set, here we see, again, we didn't um, specifically tell these chunks not to echo, so we are seeing the code here and here, but we don't see the code or any of the messages for this last um, plot that we made with cowplot.